Okay, so suppose, again, we have the same function, f of x equals 2x plus 5. We want to find a formula for the inverse function. So I'm going to start by rewriting this in a familiar way. Instead of writing f of x, I'm going to say y equals 2x plus 5. Okay, so since f inverse tells us what we have to plug in for x to get a specific y, we get a formula for f inverse just by solving this for x. So we subtract 5 from both sides. and We get y minus 5 is equal to 2x. And now we just divide both sides by 2. So we have y minus 5 divided by 2 is equal to x. So that tells us that the formula for f inverse is y minus 5 divided by 2. OK, let's just verify that it works by using our last two examples. So we know that f inverse of 3 is negative 1. Let's use our formula we just found to actually find f inverse of 3. Okay, so according to our formula, to find f inverse of 3, we take that number 3 and plug it in for y. So 3 minus 5 divided by 2, that's negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. Okay, so that works with the value that we just found. Similarly, to find f inverse of 0, we take that value 0 and plug it in for y. So we have 0 minus 5, which is negative 5, divided by 2. Okay, so that is precisely what we got by solving that equation. Okay, so just to recap, the inverse function is f inverse of y equals y minus 5 divided by 2. Okay, since the inverse function can actually be considered as a standalone function, mathematicians usually like to use the same conve convention to have, y, to have x as the variable instead of y. So the convention is to write f inverse of x equals x minus 5 divided by 2. Okay, let me recap our discussion. Okay, so what our discussion did was led us to finding a formula for the inverse function. So in general, the very first step is we swap x and y. So here we have f of x equals 8x minus 5. We can write that as y equals 8x minus 5. Okay, what this is going to do is put our answer in terms of x instead of being in terms of y. Okay, so the first step is just more of a conventional procedure. So y equals 8x minus 5. Now we're going to switch x and y. That gives us x equals 8y minus 5. And now we're going to solve this for y. To solve that for y, we're going to add 5 to both sides. So we have x plus 5 equals 8y. And now we divide both sides by 8. So then we get x plus 5 over 8 is equal to y. Okay, this is our formula for f inverse. So that means that f inverse of x is equal to x plus 5 divided by 8. Okay, press pause while you work on these two examples. Okay, for the first one, you should have found that f inverse of x is equal to the cube root of x minus 1. So we swap x and y in this step right here, and then we solve for y. So x minus 1 is y cubed, and that means that y is the cube root of x minus 1. Okay, and the second one you should have gotten f inverse of x is the negative of the quantity x minus 3 divided by 7. Okay, now we have to ask an important question, and that is which functions have inverse functions? The answer to that is the following. In order for f inverse to be a function, f must be 1 to 1. Okay, let's take a look at what happens if the function is not 1 to 1. So here's a particular case. f of x equals x squared. This function is not 1 to 1 because it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. 
Now let's try to find the inverse of this function. Okay, so again, to find the inverse, we have y equals x squared. We switch x and y, so we get x equals y squared. And now we solve for y. So we have y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x. Let's graph this guy. This is the graph of y equals the positive of the square root of x. This is the graph of y equals the negative square root of x. This is not even a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Okay, so what happens if your function is not one-to-one -one is that when you go to find the inverse, you're going to find something that's not actually a function because it's going to have two pieces and that won't pass the vertical line test. Another way of thinking about it is the following. The value of f inverse, for example, at this point, f inverse is supposed to tell us which value of x gave us that output. So if you want to try to find f inverse of this, the question is, do you go to that or you do, do you go to that? Okay, in such a case, we say that something is not a function. There should be only one answer when we plug in the input, in this case the y value, to the function. Okay, so only functions that are one-to-one -one have inverses that are functions. Okay, so this right here summarizes this, this brief last discussion about this function.